get straight into this craft project. I'm going to show you how I make these custom tall treat boxes. So of course you're going to purchase the SVG file, which you'll see the link in the comments. Once you purchase from Etsy and download, you're going to go to your uploads here. You're going to click on browse and then you're going to go to your download and get the file. I already have mine there. As you guys can see, this is how it goes. Go to your download. It'll be up here at the most recent. Right? It's an SVG. <clears throat> so all you have to do is save it, make no changes. I'm going to go back because I already have mine right here. You see? So I'm going to select it and at the bottom here, add to canvas. There we go. So now we're going to move it all the way in the corner here. We're going to get all of the elements that we need. So you can make this in any theme. I'm going to go to my uploads. I'm going to make it a Jordan theme and also a fruit theme. If you need this, I have this SVG in my SVG shop as well. And I'll have a link to that too. So this is our Jordan guy. And we're going to, you can do any theme. I'm going to do this one because I already have digital paper, right? I'm going to go here. I'm going to do a duplicate. Just put it under here because I'm going to show you how to do both and a little bit of a difference depending on what you like. Now, you also need digital paper. Think of digital paper as pattern cardstock, but here you go for using with your Cricut or whatever it is. So it's just like a pattern card but you're gonna print it out. When you upload it, it's usually large. I'm just gonna change the size to five inches just so we could have it here and when we have to use it. I'm gonna go back again and I'm going to find the Jordan one that I have. Now you can go to Etsy, you can type in the theme that you want and then behind it put digital paper. So you'll type in Jordan digital paper, you'll type in ballerina digital paper, and you'll see what's available on Etsy. Now I'm just going to go right here and go back to the canvas. Again, it's big. This one is unlocked. You don't want to change the size with it unlocked. See the little open lock there? So you're going to click it to lock it. And for now, just five inches. So. These are the files and images that we needed to upload. We're also going to need to go to shapes and get a square. And now we're going to create our window and our, our, our backdrop image that we're going to have in the background where through the window piece you'll see it. Okay, so you're going to take the square. Now you want it to be larger than the window but fit within this rectangle here. So you're going to bring it to the top, expand it, bring it down. So that's the size you want it. It has to be within this square right here. Now you're going to need two of these for each one that you're making. I always change it to like a really light gray just to represent my acetate sheet. So I'm just going to place that right there for now. Make a duplicate for the second one that we're doing as well. And you can just put it anywhere. You know what? I'm not even going to put it on there because we still have to work with these. Now for this one, this is going to be our printed image that's going to be in the background of the window. Now we're going to use them to slice out our design. So I'm going to make a duplicate only because I'm doing two boxes. Now we're going to open this up a little larger so we could fit as much pattern in than our rectangle right there. Now, how did I zoom all the way over there? Only God knows, right? So we're going to put these together. I want to move it away from everything else. When I highlight it, I'm just highlighting that. You can move it like to make sure you get certain wherever you want it. It's your preference. Highlight both. Down at the bottom right, you're going to go to slice. So we're going to get rid of, I just, I, I'm just going to click delete on my keyboard. Move this over and delete that as well. So now we have this. 
at that same size. That's going to be our background image for our Jordan box. We're going to do the strawberries. And I found these on Etsy also. I think I bought a package that um, came with like the digital paper and the images. So again, we're going to highlight both. We're going to hit slice right here. We're going to get rid of that one, get rid of that one, and we place them right here. Now we have our two images. You want to create an out an offset. I was going to say outline, same thing. So at the top here, you're going to click on offset. I don't like big offsets. I like it a little close in for this design, like right about here is good. Click apply. Now when you make an offset for print and cut, your offset will be a print and cut also. So we're going to just click that drop down and change it to a basic cut. Now this came in as a print and cut. I'm going to change it to a cut. When you purchase the SVG, it won't, but you can always change it at the top. We're going to click on offset. When you use the offset on one project, it remembers the size that you had it and do the same for the other. If you don't want it the same size, you can just maneuver it back and forth, whether you want it larger or smaller. Right? I'll go in a little bit more. Click apply. And now we have our two offsets. <clears throat> what you're going to do here, you're going to highlight the first one. You're going to bring it over here and you're going to size it in between this box. You don't want it to go past this. It has to be a little smaller, but also it needs to touch the edges of this outline. So for me, I like this size. I'm going to click on the print and cut. Don't move anything else. And then you're going to move it over. We're going to put it over here. Now let's scroll down. We're going to highlight the two layers of Jordan and you can do the same. So let me show you, well, this is in the back. I'm just going to move it to the front. You can go to arrange at the top here, bring to the front, or you can actually go here on the layers panel and select it and move it from the top or the bottom. Now with the Jordan, let's size it. Make sure it doesn't go past our line. See, that's the perfect size right here. But what I like, I don't like it so low. So this is what I usually do. Let's bring these two here. This is the size we want it so we don't have to worry about them detaching, right? So I go to shapes right here on the left. I'm going to get a square. I want it to be a little higher. Now this is preference. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to expand this here and bring this down. You see, that's the bottom. I want it to be a little bit higher, like around here. Now, this is the part where before you take this step, I have to remind you when we start kind of manipulating this box, you don't want to move it. Once we ungroup our layers, we're going to do everything right here because we're going to get our lines messed up. So you see these lines right here. We don't want them to be somewhere else. We want our score lines to be exactly at the edge. I was going to say at the crack, but you you know, at the edge right here. So you're going to click on this box. You see it's highlighted here. So this is the one we're working with. We're going to ungroup it. Remember, don't move anything. This is the square that we're working with at the top. We're going to bring it down right under our box because we need them together. Don't move anything. You're going to select your box. You're going to hold shift on your keyboard select square, go to combine, and we're going to weld. Now, the lines are still there. You see they're right here. Don't budge anything because we don't want them to shift. We're going to handle those in a second, okay? So our second layer, which we're going to cut either on cardstock or vinyl, whichever you prefer, you're going to bring the Jordan now go back to the um, arrange. I was going to say layers. Um, bring to the front just so we can see where we want it. Then put this where you want you. If you want to put it in the center, perfectly fine. Just make sure some part of his legs is touching. If you're not sure where the lines are, I'm going to show you what you can do.
click on this, but don't move it. Just select it. Go to arrange to the back, right? So that put that all the way at the bottom here, but we do have our lines here, which we're going to touch on in a moment. Now this Jordan right here is at the top. You can either go to arrange and bring it to the back. So it's right next to the box, or you can click it and drag it all the way at the bottom right here. See that now they're together. That's not our box guys. That's the second box. Good. I'm going to bring them here. So it's under this one. If you want to see them moving on top, just layer it. So this is the same thing as arrange over here. You're just arranging it on the board. You can move it wherever you want. So, but the whole point is we want them together. I like to have the Jordan a little lower here. Now you're going to select your jump man. You're going to hold shift, select your box again, and we're going to weld that one more time. Right? So now that we have this, <clears throat> I'm going to change it to red just so we can see it. We're going to go back and put it back, send to the back, because I want to see these lines. Now this right here, these are the lines that we're working with. If it seems like it's a, a little confusing, what you can do is instead of taking it all the way to the back, just bring your line here. I don't want to confuse you guys. Or if you want, work on one box at a time. So let me show you. If I were to move this and I were to delete this box, we won't see it. So because you're working at one box at a time, you're not confused. Now back to our welded box that we're not touching or moving. You're going to click on the first line. You're going to hold shift and you're going to highlight all of those. There's six of them. You're going to highlight them and just group them together. So we know they're all together. I'm just going to bring this back here. So they're next to each other. So our next step is your highlighted lines. We're going to go over here under operation. You're going to change it to score. Go back because I put these together. Hold on. They were all together in one where I dropped them. Highlight them again. Change to score. There we go. We just want to score the lines. I'm going to group them back again. Now, this is it. When you send this to your Cricut, though, your Cricut is going to see these lines on one piece of uh, cardstock or a separate sheet, and then it's going to cut the box. So what you want to do is you want to attach them. Let's put them together. We're going to highlight everything together. Click on the group, hold shift, highlight the box. Right here, you're going to click on attach. So that's telling your Cricut this page right here. So we can move it now. This page right here is going to cut and then our score lines are going to be on this same box instead of trying to score on another page. So this is our box here. You're going to take your Jordan. I'm going to move him to the front so we can see him. Let's change another color. It's a basic cut. We're going to change it to black so we can see how it's looking. Go back. All right. So when you... What did I do? Y'all, let me go back. When I put them, I put everybody together. You know what? First off, if you're new to crafting, please don't be confused. I just want to say that what you want to do, instead of using this panel and ended up dropping them and putting everybody together, use the arrange option. Bring to front. Um, I don't delete these things when I do videos because I want people to see what mistakes I make because you never know. You might get the same mistakes and don't know where to go because you saw a video that looked like everything was perfect. So we're going to change the color. Click on the little color here and make it black. We're going to line that bad boy up right here because that's how we're going to cut it. Next, what you're going to do is bring your acetate sheet. We're going to arrange the front so we can see it. Just lay it here and I'll tell you why because we're going to change the size. You have your printed paper. We're going to go to arrange again to front. Same thing. Now what you want to do is highlight and then group all of this together. 
Now, this is going to determine the size. So sometimes I prefer to cut these on 8.5 by 11 cardstock. So what I do to make sure it can fit on there, I get a shape, I get a square, and then I go up here, I unlock it, and I change the width to 8.5, change to 11, right? I'm going to arrange this to the back so that this could be on top. And then I just bring everything in so it matches the sizing. And you see that size? This is going to guarantee that I could fit this on my 8.5 by 11 cardstock. Now, if you want them bigger, which I'm going to make a duplicate, not of that, of the box, just to show you. So you're going to change this right here to 12 inches. And then you can fit it. Move this over. See, that's a little too big. Just size it to fit on your 12 by 12 card size. So that'll determine what you want. And to help you guys out, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut both so you can see the size difference and then make your determination, right? Now, for this one, it's the same thing. So I'm going to go back, get my... Get my file. Oops, we didn't mean to change that size. We're going to move everybody over. Bring it here. I'm going to repeat the same steps. Ungroup. Bring my little strawberry here to the front. Size it where I want it. I like that it has the little shapes in there. I think that looks a little cute. I don't know why. Anywho, so we ungrouped it. I'm going to arrange this. Is that the front already? Why well, I don't see it? Freaking, oh, because I'm blind. All right, so what we're going to do is move it under here. We're going to highlight both. Go to combine. Oh, also, if you haven't seen, I have a video showing you how to use this combine. Um, when you weld it, once you save the project, you won't be able to unweld. If you unite it and you come back to this project, you can go back down here and right here where it says undo, unite, see? And you could reverse it basically. So that's what that panel is about. I just weld it because I know I am not going to come back and change it. So we're going to highlight all of our pieces again. We're going to change them to score. We're just going to group them together so they stay together. Then we're going to highlight this group, highlight that box, and attach. There we go. Just remember you're not moving anything because you don't want those lines to be moved. I'm going to just arrange this to the back so that these could be in the front. We're going to lay them together. Put a little strawberry so we see how it looks. Um, I think I'm going to cut this box in pink. What y'all think? I think pink is cute. I moved it to the back. So I'm just going to click on the box down here by itself. It doesn't have to be the exact pink. Whatever my card sock is, is what it's going to be. So I'm going to group it. And instead of bringing in that um, 8.5 by 11 card sock to measure, I'm just going to look over here. It's 8.264, and I'm going to change this to that. 8.264. Two, six, four inches in width, and there we go. See, matches up, and that's it. Now, your next step is save. Always save before you do anything, and I'm just going to save it as tall boxes. Now, if you are using a Maker 3 or a maker, you have the option of the scoring wheel. The scoring wheel is going to give you a deeper score line, so it's easier to fold with. If you don't, or you don't want to use the scoring wheel, you can use the scoring stylus. It still works. I um, prefer the scoring wheel when I have thick paper, like that 100-pound cardstock, and it makes the boxes durable. The boxes are still good with the 8.5 by 11 
cardstock, not eight and a half by 11, guys, sorry, the 65 pound cardstock, it still works good. It's just more durable if you have a hundred pound cardstock. Um, a lot of places don't sell a hundred pound cardstock in 12 by 12 size, but cardstock warehouse does. I don't see it that much in, um, like Michael's, you'll find the eight and a half by 11 full pack of black sometimes in that, um, 10 pound. I think I might just change this to black and cut the Jordan guy in red. Who knows? So now that we save, I'm cutting on my Explore 3 here. I'm going to go to make it. Now it's telling me something is too large. So if you ever want to see, let me just minimize this. Let me see something. So sometimes the Cricut doesn't have, you'll see like a red line showing you that something is too big. But I've noticed, let me open this back up, when you group things together for some reason, it'll tell you it's too large. So click on this, go to ungroup right here. Oh, cricket, not, don't act up with us today. Let's right click, ungroup, right click, ungroup, right click, ungroup, save our changes, save. We're not safe as is if you're saving a whole new project and then let's send it to the machine to see what it does. See, I, I don't know why when you group it, it'll tell you it's too big. Now our first one here, this is our print and cut. Now print, print and cut has expanded to like the 11 by 17. I'm going to change it back to eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And this is what I'm going to print on, right? Let me see something. Change this to 12 by 12 and put it on one sheet. Now, even though we changed this to 12 by 12, if you look where this is, you can just lay your eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock here and it'll fit. See the 11 is here, eight and a half is literally dead center. But always remember, see this little gap right here? You don't have to line your paper all the way up. Give it a tiny little space and it'll fit. So this one, we can just place our eight and a half by 11 sheet on here. I don't know what this is, Cricut. This is no layer. I don't know what it's reading. This one is the larger one. That'll be the 12 by 12. No, this is our eight and a half by 11. Where did Cricut put our 12 by 12? Mm-hmm, look at that. So let me come back, cancel. I'm about to say, what is that? It's supposed to be two boxes. Let's go back. See here, they put it on one sheet. It's two boxes, but it's acting a darn fool. So that's 12 by 12. And it still disappears. Okay, so what it's telling us is, is trying to say that it's still reading as it's too big. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight this and go in just a tiny bit. You know why? Sorry, guys. I forgot to mention. So Cricut, even though it says 12 inches, let me, it's 11. You're supposed to consider 11 and a half. So when you put the 12 by 12 in to represent your mat, you're going to put 11 and a half by 11 and a half. My bad. Save that again. And then you're going to go to make it. And see, there we go. So now this is our big one and this is our smaller one. Does it give us the eight and a half by 11? It doesn't give us the option because we didn't go in less than that 8.5, right? But like I said, you can just place your paper here and line it up and I'll show you how. And then we have our black with the Jordan sign. You know what I do? I cut this on vinyl and then I just lay the vinyl on top. Even if you want to do heat transfer vinyl, you could cut it on there and do the same. There goes, there's going to be another eight and a half by 11. Then we're going to go back to this and change it. I'm going to be printing on eight and a half by 11 glossy cardstock paper. And the link will be in the description. And this one is going to be our acetate sheet. So let me just send to print. You're going to continue. Let me tell you about printing. You're going to send to print. You're going to choose your printer. I'm using the Epson EcoTank 16600. Always open the system dialog. 
then click on print. Um, because I have the design space in the full screen, it's just going to pop up. If you minimize your screen a little bit, the this printing option is going to pop up behind this screen. So you just got to move it and get to it. So you're going to change. I'm not printing in the main tray. I'm sending this to the rear tray because it's my thicker paper. And then here allows you to choose your option. So usually if I'm printing on cardstock, I'll choose heavyweight paper. And for now, I'm going to choose photo high gloss paper. Of course, you always want your quality on best no matter what it is you're doing. So we're going to click on print. Then I'm going to go straight to the second one. I'm going to do the same. And the settings are the same from what I last used. And then I'm going to click on print. Now when you do that, you see it's still selected on the second one because I always forget. Click back on the first page. So once you print it, it goes straight to it. Now when I'm cutting on my glossy cardstock, I always choose poster board. I keep it on poster board when I'm cutting the acetate sheets. And for the cardstock down here, if I'm cutting on 65 pound cardstock, I usually choose 80 pound cardstock. If I'm cutting on the 100 pound cardstock, I keep it on poster board. So all of my thick items, I keep on poster board. And for my regular, like 65, I have it on medium cardstock. So I'm just going to choose that back. Uh, remember my material settings. This means every mat that it goes to, it's going to be on the same setting that you just had, right? The poster board. So I have to remember when I get to here to come back and change it. This is going to be vinyl. So I'm going to choose like premium outdoor vinyl. And that's it for settings. We're going to make sure we go back to that first page so we know what it's cutting on. I'm going to go to print and then we'll go over and assemble all of these items together. Okay, so we have our printed piece and I want to show you line it up against those lines. Don't judge my dirty mat, okay? So you want to line it right on the edge where the lines are. And get it perfect if your mat is sticky you could just press it down if not i'll show you how to use the brayer to press it down some more now with the cardstock oh it's a little blurry I'm, I'm gonna get it right in a minute so with the cardstock you want to leave a little bit of space so we make sure it fits right and this is the brayer i was telling you guys about that helps you press down your paper when your um, mat is not too sticky it's a little blurry i know right now you're probably thinking do i need glasses no you don't it's my camera but i'm gonna fix it for you right quick like in five, four, three, two, one. See, there you go. Now you see that little bit of space I'm left in between the lines. That's what you're going to do to make sure that that cut exactly on our eight and a half by 11 paper. You're going to load it into the Cricut. Y'all already know how to do that, right? And I know y'all not judging my dusty Cricut. I know y'all not judging me because y'all love me and I love y'all. So press it, let it cut, let it do its thing, cut all of our layers and voila. Here we are. All of the layers we cut, the regular size, the one big one, so we can see the difference in sizing. We have our print and cut pieces. We have our clear acetate sheet. I love sheets with an S, plural. Um, I love Cricut acetate sheets because they have that protective tape over it. And you see our little cutout for the Jordan. And we're ready to go. I cut my jump mand on vinyl um, because I didn't want to glue anything. You know what I'm saying? So... We're gonna start by peeling off the vinyl. You can use your transfer sheet, but it's not really necessary. Like, you know, we could avoid using that. Just peel it right off and stick that bad boy on. Quick tip, you want to use a really thick kind of um, vinyl. This one I'm using is a Cricut vinyl. It's a little bit transparent. I don't know if you guys can see it against the black, but it's a little bit transparent. You want something a little thicker where you don't see it as much and the red is a little deeper, Oracle works. So now our pieces that were scored, you're gonna fold them a little with your hand and then use either your folding bone, I got the little Cricut tool, or you can use any, even like a, a little spatula, anything that's flat, you can use to press it against it. Now this one is cut on the 100 pound cardstock, so it's a little bit thicker so you're going to, you know, be bending a little more. You want to be a little careful. Those little dust bunnies I'm dusting off there, but it's okay. Um, you see, you can kind of see how thick it is. 
Be careful on this edge here. Take your time. Don't rush. Nine times out of ten, I'm usually rushing and end up regretting it. Now, what I do is bend a little. Then I lay it flat onto the desk and then fold back. Use my finger there to smooth it out a little bit. And then use the tool to flatten it so it gives it that sharp edge of each fold. So we're just going to repeat that with all of the areas of our box. See that there giving me a little bit of trouble on the edge? Take your time. Also, because this is the 100 pound cardstock, if you use the scoring wheel, it'll give a deeper score. But I don't really like using the scoring wheel because the scoring wheel goes in the same slot as the blade. So you're gonna have to take out the blade, put in the scoring wheel. When it's done scoring, go over to the Cricut and put in the blade. Ain't nobody got time for that. With the scoring stylus, it stays in the second slot while you're, so it's, you know, like scores, then cuts, scores, and cuts. And you don't have to come back till it's completely done, but it's not a deep, deep score on the 110 pound cardstock like it is if you use the scoring wheel. But it's okay because you can still see it and you can still make the folds like I'm doing here. It's not that hard. And I love this, um, these boxes. Because if you know me, y'all know I don't like things that require too much work. And I'm just chatting with y'all while these things get folded, you know, because it's the same folding that we're going through. So I don't have to necessarily talk you through any part here. But I like projects that don't require too much work. Because I always consider if I ever get an order of like 20 or more, is it going to be too much for me to do? If it is, I ain't selling it. I ain't making it. I'll probably make one or two for family. But if not, that's for me. That's the way to be. Now, I showed you guys, I put on the list, not showed you guys, I put on the list two types of double-sided tape. This one is a thinner one. You're going to use this on the edging for our acetate sheet. So you're going to line it up right along that edge. Just guide it with your hands. Then you're going to clip it at the end there. Press it down so that it sticks so when you peel the other side off, it's still sticking to the box. You're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. FYI, do not, do not judge my ashy hands, okay? Because I had to wash my hands and I couldn't put lotion or oil on it because you know it gets on the cardstock. So y'all getting a little bit of ash with this craft, okay? Now, after you press it down, peel it off, just like that. It gave me a little hard time. Also, another FYI, I just love throwing in FYIs, don't I? Look at how my burn scar is healing there. I thought for a minute I would have had to wear Michael Jackson gloves to do these videos. Um, but it's healing really good. All right, so I finally got it off. You're going to do the same little one along the top also. Now, I peeled it off before I did the top piece because obviously you don't need that piece on there because when you peel off the top, the whole thing like comes off. But anyway, you choose. Just put it along the two sides, the top and the bottom. Now, the bottom piece, um, remember we welded that piece so it's a little thicker on the bottom. If you want, you could use the thicker double-sided tape. Me, I usually use, I do like two strips of the regular one. Now, you see how I'm struggling here? It's because I had to press down good to make sure it was sticking to the box and then peel it off. It's okay. We struggle a little bit, you know? What's that? Now, the bottom, same thing. Just go across. You're not going past our folded um, area because it's just flat on the front. See, I put two strips. There you go. There you have it. That little scissors I have that I'm using there is a Fiskars non-stick scissors. Um, it's a little it's a little pricey in Michaels, all right? It was almost like $20 for that little thing. But when you're using double-sided tape and things like that or double-sided foam that you need to cut, it's really good because it's not sticking to your scissors and messing up your scissors. So now we're gonna get our piece of the acetate sheet and we're gonna lay it down there. But before you do that, what I always do, whatever my design is, I put a little piece of the double-sided tape on the design so that it lays flat on the um, acetate sheet as well. So whether you have, no matter what shape you have, just cut a little piece off so it sticks down because you really don't want that flapping up when you have the little window piece for your box. So lay it down as usual, press it, press it good, 
and then peel it off. I just be struggling with this double-sided tape. Only God knows. You're going to peel off one side of your protective tape. I almost put it down without peeling it. See? Pull it down. Then you're going to lay it onto the double-sided tape. Press good. Give it a little pressure so it doesn't come off. And then after you do that, you're going to peel off the other side of the tape. Now, it's a nice clear like real clear and nice. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, the good part about this box, you can ship it flat and just have your customer assemble it. And um, instead of peeling off the double-sided tape to close that area, you're just going to leave that on. When I get to it, I'll remind you. Now, this part here, we cut on a glossy cardstock. If you don't want to do that, you can also cut it on sticker paper and just stick it on there. But I usually do it on the glossy cardstock. Put the thicker double-sided tape. If you choose, like if you don't want to purchase two sets of double-sided tape, that first, that's perfectly fine. Just use your thinner one, like more strips. So either I put two on the edge or sometimes I put three and put one down the middle. Peel it off and then you're going to line it up in that square area of the background of your box. Lay it down, line it up drop it and then press it give it a little pressure and look at our box see this box ain't take long especially when you get um get in the swing of it you'll be knocking these box out one two three and let me tell y'all i was i'm always like wondering if i'm closing this this type of box up all the time the right way and i always get it wrong the first time but then the second time i understand but don't worry i'll show y'all now, our thick tape, it fits exactly on that little fold. So this is the part where I'm telling you, when you put this double-sided tape on, instead of peeling off the other side, leave it just like that and then ship it to your customers flat so they can peel it off and just close up the box. That way you don't have, you could literally ship this in like a thick envelope instead of having to have them all assembled and get a bigger box depending on how much you make. So just leave this piece on ship it flat and they can assemble it. And what I do is in my description, either Etsy or wherever I'm selling, I'll let them know that some assembly is required. And I will also link like a video to how to assemble it on YouTube for the customer. So when I ship it, I'll ship like a receipt or a little paper with a QR code that they can scan and go straight to the video. Now here, this is what I'll tell you. I'll, I, I, always mess up now i put the big tab in here and then chuck the little two pieces in to close it up wrong wrong you're supposed to put the two little tabs in first and then the big one i'm gonna show y'all when i correct myself on the next box you're gonna pinch these two together the two flaps on the side you just bring them in look at that and we done like, that's it. And you could even hang them up because they have the little hook. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at me showing y'all the bottom like if I did it right. But don't worry. On to the next one. So I assembled the green one. And I wanted to show you guys I took it out. Because here's when I realized that I did it wrong. So I opened it back up. Now you're going to put the two little flaps first. Then the big one. And that's how you make it look nice and neat and seamless. Look at that. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, remember we designed the larger box that fits into the fits onto the 12 by 12 cardstock. So this is the larger one. And what you can do is you can offer your customers either a smaller size or a larger size, or just choose which one you want to make. I offer the smallest one. I don't do the big one. I just did this larger one to show you guys how you can do it. Now, when you put these together, right? When you line it up, I didn't show it earlier on the first box. After you do it, lay it flat and press it down. That way it's secure to each other. And of course, I came back and closed this one the correct way as well. I'm learning. I'm learning. That's part of the crafting process. But anywho, and there we go. Flap the top down. Now, um, some things you could put in here. Also, you don't sell them items unless you choose to. I don't. I sell the empty box and then the customer put things in there like little toys, glasses, and things like that. So this is the comparison of the two sizes when you cut on 8.5 by 11 and 12 by 12 cardstock. See that difference? Mm-hmm. 
And of course, of course, I had to grab my little handy dandy measuring tape so I can actually show you guys the real difference. So the large one, that's at seven and a half inches. And the smaller one, it measures at about six and a half inches. See that there? Mm -hmm. And now here we have at about three inches. And the smaller one is two and a half inches. Now half and holes is as good as I get here. A little over a one and a half, a little under one and a half. That's as good as it gets. Also, while I'm, look at it, look at it, cute. Make sure y'all subscribe to this channel, okay? Now, these are three other designs I wanted to show you guys that I made. So have fun, make any theme you want, and don't forget to tag the craft print, okay?